This talk is about the historical method in management research, or to be more precise, it is about the lack of the historical method in management research and how that has produced lots of accidental historians in the field. We use history all the time. In fact, often we find it impossible to explain our actions without referring to our past. So, for example, during the 2016 Brexit referendum, we saw both sides using history to try to convince us to vote in a particular manner. Intuitively, we understand that there is a connection and continuity between the past, the present, and the future. What we have done in the past affects the present, and what we are doing now will impact the future as it unfolds. The pervasive use of history is reflected in this quote from Margaret Macmillan's very interesting book, The Uses and Abuses of History. And the book starts with the following sentence. History is something we all do, even if, like the man who discovered he was writing prose, we do not always realize it. The book is very readable and I recommend it highly, but it is a bit skewed because in it, the author mainly talks about the abuses of history rather than its uses. But that is perhaps understandable, as history has been abused a lot, not least by management researchers. So, if you do not know anything about historiography, or in other words, the historical method, where do you start? And I always say, start with the classics, you cannot go wrong. Oh. One thing we have to keep in mind here, that uh, history as a field is much more empirically minded than management. Historians in general do not tend to pontificate on the philosophical assumptions of their inquiries. They just get on with the task of writing history. So unlike management, there are not that many books on methods in history, but the one which everyone refers to when it comes to historiography or historical method is What is History by E. H. Carr, written in 1961, I think. And what I'm going to discuss today is based largely on my reading of what is history. Richard Evans' book, In Defense of History, takes forward Carr's ideas and develops them further. The History Manifesto is a relatively recent book, available freely online. And here the authors uh, argue for historians to take the long view, the long durée, a term coined by Fernand Braudel, a very noted French historian. But here the authors also argue that uh, historians should analyze events and not merely describe them. I recommend all three books, and there are, of course, few others as well, but these are three of my favorite books on historiography. So I'm going to juxtapose the historical method with the case study approach, mainly because in recent years, the case study method has become the methodological choice of many management researchers. I have used the case study method myself, and it was partly due to the frustrations that I felt while using this approach, I gravitated towards the historical method. Case studies are full of history. It is just that it is history that has been badly researched. This may sound harsh, but I think it is a fair evaluation. The problem, as I see it, is the lack of rigor and fact-checking in case studies. It is in this respect, I think, that the case study approach in particular, but management research in general, can learn a lot from the historical method. One big myth about history is that history merely describes the past, that it is just a narrative of events that have occurred. In reality, history is the study of causes, it helps you to answer the big questions that are out there, the why and how questions, why things are the way they are, either now or sometime in the past. And here it is worth quoting Carr from his book, What is History? And Carr wrote, the study of history is a study of causes. The historian continuously asks the question, why? And so long as he hopes for an answer, he cannot rest. So how do you do history? What is the historical method? In a very broad sense, history is what historians do. As I have mentioned before, history is quite an empirical discipline and historians tend to avoid philosophizing about their research methods. 
as with any research, the process starts with some questions that need to be answered. I think the historical method is particularly suitable for those questions that require serious exploration of time. The historical analysis involves discovery of facts and identification of historical facts, and the two are different. Not all facts are historically significant, and the historical significance of a particular fact is dependent on the context of the research. And as history is primarily a study of causes, you have to construct causal statements out of those historical facts and obviously produce an explanatory narrative. The historian places great emphasis on evidence and amongst all forms of evidence that one can produce, the historian prioritizes the primary source. Primary sources can include physical remains, archeological artifacts, for example, oral reports, people talking about their past, oral history as it is sometimes referred to as, visual documents, pictures, images, paintings, and of course, written documents like letters, reports, birth and death registers, all kinds of original written materials. In management research, a lot of emphasis is placed on the critical perspective, but I think there is a crucial difference between the critical perspective that we understand and expect in management research and that what is visible within the historical method. The critical perspective in management research is focused on the theoretical frameworks that we use. But in historical research or in the historical method, the critical perspective is all about critically evaluating the empirical data. The historian carefully considers the process through which the primary material was created and takes into account the biases and prejudices and the values and beliefs of the people who created that primary material. So to simplify, in management research, the critical perspective relates to theories. In historical research, it is about the data. I will end the talk by making some comments on my personal journey on why I made the transition from using case study as my methodological choice to writing a full-fledged historical account of the Indian university system, using obviously the historical method. My interest in the historical method started with my frustration with the case study approach. I was researching the Indian university system, and when I looked for history books on the topic, particularly those that cover both the pre- and uh, post-independence period, to my surprise, I found that there is no such book out there. So I wrote the book that I couldn't find. The observation that started me on my research journey was the following. Universities in India play a passive role in the country's innovation system. And the research question that arose from that observation was, why this passivity? The case study approach, which I used initially Although it helped me to provide some answers to the question, I felt that it did not really allow me to get to the heart of the matter. And for this specific research question, I found the historical method to be immensely useful. Now, I'm not saying that all research questions require the historical method, but I think those research questions that require serious exploration of time, how a particular phenomena has evolved over time, for example, they benefit from the historical method. So these are my key learning that I have gained in the process of using the historical method. Always check out the primary source. I think this has never been more important. We live in the age of fake news. Do not depend on anyone else's interpretation of the fact. If possible, always trace the fact back to the original source. You will be surprised how often the interpretation of the fact and the fact as reflected in the original source say different things. And this is very important. You do not have to write a history thesis to use the historical method. There is no reason why the historical method cannot be incorporated effectively within the case study approach, but few have done this successfully. If a case study displays the following attributes, a focus on primary sources as evidence, a critical evaluation of that primary material, and a serious exploration of time, then I will suggest that the case study has adopted a historical method. And 
I will end by saying that as it is often impossible to avoid history, it is better to be a self-conscious historian rather than ending up as an accidental one.